In this video, I'm gonna be making a straight edge guide that works with a variety of cutting tools. It's quick and easy to adjust and it locks securely without slipping. And if you wanna build one of these for yourself, plans are available and there's a link in the video description. To get started, I'm cutting out the material for the rails, and I'm using some pieces of rough maple for that. To ensure that I wind up with something that's straight, I could pass it over the jointer, but instead I'm gonna make a series of cuts here on the table saw that accomplishes about the same thing. I covered this method in more detail in a separate video, and again, there's a link in the description to that as well. After I had the two rails cut down to approximate size, I can run them through my planer to finish the milling. Next, I need to cut a rabbit into each edge, and I'm gonna do that on the table saw as well in two passes. My table saw fence hasn't won any awards, but it really should because it works exceptionally well and has made a huge improvement to the way this homemade table saw operates. In fact, it's a very capable replacement for most of the stock fences you'll find on lower cost table saws today. You can improve the usability and accuracy of just about any saw by building and installing this fence system. And if you're interested in this project, once again, there's a link in the description that'll take you to the build article where you can get a copy of these plans. The rails need a series of cuts at the front and to do that, I'm using my mini table saw sled. This first slot is for a stack of plastic plates that the cam will rub against. I can then quickly reinstall the fence and cut away the front part before doing the same for the other rail. I need to make one small additional cut to trim back the step one eighth of an inch. And this is for clearance for the rub plate and is detailed in the plans. Next, I need to make the top. And since I don't have any quarter inch plywood, I'm gonna make my own by cutting down a piece of half inch. The next part to make is the cam handle itself, and I'm using 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood for that. The first step is to draw a center line and then mark out two points that are 1 16th of an inch away from each other. One point is the outer diameter of the cam, and the other is the pivot point that the cam rotates on. After cutting it out roughly on the bandsaw, I can bring it over to my homemade belt disc sander and fine tune the shape. I initially drilled the pivot hole in the cam with a 3 8 inch drill bit, but the hole needs to be slightly enlarged so that it will rotate on the pivot pin freely. To get started on assembly, I'm going to glue the rails to the top and I'm gonna fire in a few short pins to keep the parts accurately lined up. And while the glue is drying on that, I can get the cam assembly put together.
The toilet bolt needs to be glued into the counter bore of the load spreader, and I'm using fast setting epoxy for this. And while I still have the epoxy, I'm gonna use that to glue the quarter inch dowel into the end clamping block, and then bring that over and trim it off on the bandsaw. Next, I need to drill and countersink a hole in the front clamping block and then screw on two layers of the rub plate plastic, driving in the screw until it's flush on the surface. And this rub plate material is just slippery plastic. And I got mine from the lid on an ice cream container and just cut them out to the correct size. With the glue dried on the rails, I can get the rub plates installed in the slot. And it depends upon the thickness of the plastic that you use for this, but the one that I use, I wound up with four layers filling the slot. With the cam pivot blocks temporarily clamped in place, I can check the action and this looks pretty good. So I'll spread on some glue, clamp it up, and then set it aside and let it dry. In the meantime, the epoxy on the toilet bolt load spreader combination has dried and I've sanded that smooth and flush and made sure that the load spreader moves freely through that slot. And before installing the end clamping block, I can make some marks on here for commonly sized sheets, like typically plywood is 48 inches wide, so it's handy to have that on there. And melamine usually comes 49 inches wide, so I'll mark that as well. I let the glue dry overnight and now I can try it out. I've got this sheet of clear acrylic that I need to cut a piece from and this edge guide should be just a thing for doing that. Since I'm gonna be using this battery powered saw often to make cuts with this guide, it's handy to mark the offset right on top of the jig like this for future reference. Next, I've got a narrower piece of half inch plywood that I need to cut. And sometimes the jigsaw is the only tool available. So I thought I would give it a try here. The jigsaw vibrates a lot when you're using it, so it's a really good test to see if the fence will move while you're making a cut. And again, I could measure and mark the offset for this tool as well, if I was gonna use it often. The jigsaw made a pretty decent cut, but it can be improved vastly by trimming a little bit off with the router. And here what I'm doing is after I've set up the guide, I wanna make a very small adjustment and I can do that by tapping on the side of the guide, even though it's clamped on really tight and won't move during the cut. Like I said at the beginning of the video, plans are available for this project if you would like to build one for yourself. And there's a link in the video description.